before we start the video, just a quick heads up. This is chapter 2 of my series regarding the Super Monkey Ball franchise. In this episode, I'll be covering the second game in the series to see how it evolved the gameplay. That being said, I recommend you watch chapter 1 first for additional context. With that being said though, hey there, I'm Carno, and welcome back to Fallout, a Super Monkey Ball retrospective. Super Monkey Ball 2 released less than a year after the original, which on first sight might seem like a serious red flag. Like, who starts a sequel so soon without even figuring out how it does first? But actually, SMB2 was in development before the original was even finished, so I guess they really had high hopes for this thing. Nevertheless, it was released in 2002 for the GameCube, and basically did what every sequel is supposed to do, take everything good about the original, and just make it better in almost every conceivable way. It features all new courses, twice as many party games, a brand new UI, and even a graphical upgrade. Look up the word sequel on dictionary.com and you're bound to come across this game. Now, like I said, the main challenge mode is basically the same structure as SMB1, that being to roll your monkey to the goal within the time limit. You have three difficulties, beginner, advanced, and expert, with extra stages for each. An improvement though, at least in my opinion, is that the requirements for unlocking those extra stages are a lot more lenient than before. Whereas previously you had to have perfect runs for beginner and advanced, this time it's the same rules as expert, just finish without using a continue and you're good. However, this doesn't mean that the later courses can't get insanely difficult. You see, this game tackles difficulty a little differently than before. Where in the first one was more about raw precision and speed control, here the developers got a lot more creative with the physics engine, and even add extra tools to let you play around with it. You've got switches, portals, trampolines, and even one-off obstacles like this spinning cage which you need to enter at the right time. And again, like the first game, Monkey Ball 2 does a great job teaching you most of the mechanics and gimmicks that will be utilized. However, once you get a hold of things, this game does not hold back at all. There are more than a few times where you'll see a stage for the first time and just sit there wondering, how is that even a stage? That being said, a lot of them are really fun to pull off once you figure them out. For example, take the first expert stage, which introduces you to these teleporters. You don't need to do anything fancy with them, but the stage does require their use for completion. For normal people, that is. But then, throughout the game, their use becomes more and more complex until you get to the extra stages, where you'll need to use them continuously to build up speed to make it across a gap. And then later on, you need to roll down this treacherous spiral ramp, go through the teleporter as fast as you can, and use that speed as you jump out to clear an even larger gap. This game was using Portal's puzzles five years before Portal was even released. And what's more, this game's difficulty curve is a lot better than the first ones. It's definitely not perfect, but there aren't any expert 7s here at least. Another small touch I love? They give all the stages names this time! It's pretty inconsequential, but the fact that the developers want the extra mile to do it is just amazing. Sure, they don't all fit very well, but even when that's the case, it's mostly for comedic effect. <laughs> like who could forget the best stage, totalitarianism. Or what about another classic, Hierarchy? Can't wait for Monkey Ball 3 featuring more stages like Republican Anarchy. Now of course this game isn't perfect. The camera, although improved, can still be a pain sometimes as proven by stages like Strata, and a couple stages are just downright unfair. Of course the example everyone loves to point out is Switch Inferno, where you're given a grid of switches and need to guess which one won't kill you. Needless to say, this is probably the worst stage in the game. Again though, apart from those issues, I'd say about 90% of the deaths were purely my fault, since there aren't as many minuscule beams or blind leaps of faith. But it's not even over. Returning from the first game is the master level. 
These ones are generally pretty unforgiving and you'll burn through quite a few lives getting through them. But if you still have some left over, you even get the Master Extra stages. Just to make sure we're clear, you first beat the 50 Expert stages, then you beat the 10 Extras, then you go through the 10 Master stages, and even after that, there's still 10 more. Talk about going above and beyond. This game is insane. Now, one thing I love about the game over the original is when it comes to these final levels, it leaves a lot more in the hands of the player. A pretty infamous example would be Notch, known to be the bane of many players' existence. Now, when tackling the stage, you can either use the speedrunner's method and try to make the goal immediately, or you can be patient, wait for this cylinder to rotate, and have a much easier time at the cost of a few extra seconds. There are quite a few stages I could go into as well. Helix, Long Taurus, even Arthropod, the final advanced stage. All of these give you options on how you want to complete the level, and you're rewarded for exploring your options. That, in my opinion, is much more satisfying game design than the raw challenge featured in SMB1. Hard enough to take dozens of hours of practice, but adaptive enough to be a different experience between players. Speaking of player experiences, this game really did a lot to make sure casual play is enjoyable as well. Besides making the requirements to reach the extra stages more lenient, the game also features scalable difficulty. You see, like in the first game, play points return, and as before, they are used to unlock mini-games. But once all of them are unlocked, you can continue spending them on gifts, one of which includes additional starting lives, all the way up to 99. This means that with enough play points, you can make the challenge mode as strict or as loose as you want. Maybe you'll want to restrict yourself to 30 lives in advanced mode, or maybe you just want to casually run through expert mode and turn the counter all the way up to the max. Again, I'm all about customizability, and this game has it in spades. Heck, you can even try running expert on the base 3 lives if you want. I don't know why you would do that, but the option is there. Even beyond that, once you reach the master levels, you can skip right to them from the main menu, so you don't have to play 45 minutes of expert stages in order to play them. These guys thought of everything. Now, those of you who have played this game are probably waiting for me to mention this, but new to Super Monkey Ball 2 is a full-fledged story mode. And for those of you who are wondering why the level themes are so weird this time, here is your reason why. You see, up until now, we really didn't know anything about Ai Ai or his companions, or why they were collecting bananas other than, you know, their monkeys. But here, we learned that besides using them as regular food, these monkeys use the power of bananas to do basically whatever's convenient for the plot. And in this game, their task was saving Jungle Island from the evil Dr. Bad Boon, an evil genius who came from the future using a time machine in order to seal all those bananas. This story is something else. It's like the writers were making a fun cartoon but were on acid the entire time. One moment you're stopping a bomb from erupting a volcano, thus sinking the entire island. Because science. The next moment you've been eaten by a whale and are exploring a lost city inside its stomach. And the next moment you're destroying a space colony, thus stopping the doctor from shooting a laser beam down at the earth which will make all bananas taste like curry. And then, sometimes it becomes a fallen anime with this magical Ai Ai Poo spell. Plus, there are quite a few scenes which are straight up uncomfortable. For example, in one chapter, the doctor is taking a bath and the four monkeys, who he previously shrunk down, sneak into his clothes and tickle him until he grows them back to normal. Or one more example, Bad Boon expresses several times in a game an interest in marrying Mimi, who is Ai Ai's wife, by the way. Obviously, she keeps saying no, but at one moment in particular, the doctor goes full-on creeper with her. And I mean full-on, like, how is this in an E-rated game, creeper? Mmm, it makes me uncomfortable even seeing it. But on the whole, I'm kind of impressed that this whole story is even here. I mean, this started out as a simple arcade game, and even the console port had animations that looked like they were thrown into Blender 30 minutes before lunch break, at least by today's standards. Here though, this is surprisingly polished, for the time at least, 
And hey, there's even an extra cutscene for those people who finish the master difficulty. See guys, I'm Monkey Ball 2's best friend. And they said I needed a job. But anyway, before I get too sidetracked, let's get to the gameplay. This mode is divided up into 10 worlds, each one having 10 levels respectively. Now the developers really push this as a first mode to try when first starting the game, and once you play it, you'll see why. All these levels are ripped straight from challenge mode, with the exception of the final world which has its own exclusive levels. What's more, the order stays relatively the same here too, so it's essentially like playing the beginner, advanced, and expert modes in succession to one another. Plus, you can try all the levels within the sets in whatever order you'd like, meaning if you have a hard time with one, you can skip it for the moment and come back to it later. Plus, the life counter is completely removed, so there's no worry about being set back at all. Something I wish more games at a time did. And the best part is that after working your way through the story, you're pretty much set to comfortably try the challenge mode. Even beyond that though, this thing is a blast to occasionally run through as a veteran player since the removal of the lives counter means that you can have fun playing around with the physics engine and making life harder than it needs to be. And let me tell you, when you can go top speed on coaster and blast through the goal at the end, it's extremely satisfying. But anyway, last but not least, let's take a look at the mini games here. There are twice as many this time, and the ones for the original have gone sequels. So again, let's run through the list with my quick opinions on each. Monkey Race 2, second verse, same as the first. This is basically the same game, but with different maps. Pretty good, but still not my go-to party game. Monkey Fight 2, now this is what I call a sequel. You get your group of friends, go sudden death mode, first to five wins, and turn off items. Now you can change these rules if you want, and it's still a pretty good time, but just know that if you do, you're playing the game wrong. You've got new maps, you can now charge up your punches, and yes, sitting in the corner is a viable method. Monkey Target 2, pure classic. Some might say it's a bit easier than the first, but I personally just think there's less BS. The Wheel of Doom is gone, the items are collectible this time, and the targets in general are a bit easier. Enjoyable as both a multiplayer and a single player experience. Monkey Billiards 2, as good as the first one, if not better. Now this game is a bit slower paced, which may not work with your friend group, but with the right people, it's a blast. Plus they added two more rule sets and what might be the most chill song in the entire game. Besides World 3, of course. Monkey Bowling 2, it's still kinda garbage. It's the same basic controls, except the monkeys have their own characteristics. So that's neat, I guess. Add in two more rule sets and some challenge stages and you've got yourself an experience that is honestly pretty good, just not for me. Monkey Golf 2, the last upgraded one, this minigame is a lot more of an actual golf game than a mini golf game. I never fully understood the new control scheme here, but that's just more of a me problem. Again, better for single player sessions than multiplayer ones. Monkey Boat, I'm sure somebody likes this game. I don't know, the controls aren't bad and they can be mastered, but I mean, look at this. I guess I'll just group this with Monkey Bowling and say it isn't for me. Monkey Shot, pretty good arcade style shooter. It certainly isn't a cakewalk, but team up with a friend and you'll have a good time. I don't really have much to say about this one, except it's good. Monkey Dogfight, here we go boys. Get your friends around, choose sun death mode, and go on Monkey Space Wars. If you choose anything else, it's still fun, but just know that you're playing the game wrong. Oh yeah, and one guy will inevitably die first and think the game is trash. You've got Miss, uh, Pineapples, and you've got Peanuts. But get ready to mash that B button because Pineapples are all you'll be using here. This is definitely up there with Monkey Fight and Target 2 if you ask me. Monkey Soccer. It's pretty mediocre. The AI is not dependable, it feels impossible to control since you're automatically switching characters, and the whole thing just feels like you're pressing the A button and hoping you score. Monkey Baseball. It's fun with friends, not with computers. The computers will just spank you into next week unless you turn them on easy, and at that point you're almost guaranteed to win. Really, it's because this game is not baseball. Sure, you have the same scoring system, but instead of hitting the ball as far as you can, here you either aim for the pockets or aim for the jump boards. 
The fielders are basically useless unless you run directly into them, and the pitcher can get away with all sorts of BS, like changing speed and direction after the pitch. This is a mode that you'll play every once in a while, but then get burned out on after a couple games. Last up, Monkey Tennis. Not gonna lie, this is another case where I just couldn't get a reliable hold of the controls. I tried several times, but the best I got was competent. And maybe that's why I kind of found this game to be boring. Like, even compared to the games like Billiards and Golf, this game just seemed to drag on. And I was ready to move on after a few games. Okay, so those were the 12 party games. A good majority of them are at least fun with friends, but some of them are just not worth the time it takes to unlock them. Monkey Fight, Target, and Dogfight though? Those are ones my friends and I are always willing to go back to. Oh, and speaking of playing with friends, you can once again play the main casual mode with friends, although the competitive mode is absent here, probably because of all the gimmicks and rotating parts. I can't see the GameCube having a good time running simultaneous instances very well. Frankly, I didn't care anyway, but hey, whatever. Anyway, I think it's time I wrap this up. In case you couldn't tell, this is the game I grew up with, and I personally find it a lot more enjoyable and repeatable than Super Monkey Ball 1. And even besides my own personal opinion, this game just outshines the original in almost every way. The stages are much more evolved, the gimmicks are implemented in a mature fashion, there are twice as many minigames to play with friends, and the whole game feels much more polished and customizable than before. It feels like the devs were constantly asking what the user would enjoy, and you can tell they knew they had something good on their hands. Plus, this game still has the small touches I loved from the original. You can still play through the credits, the food is still shamelessly branded, the music is sublime, and the last stage is even a rotating GameCube, where the goal is in the disc slot. I mean, come on, I basically have to give extra points for that. So at this point, it was clear that AV had a winning formula here, and all they needed to do is make more. Well, let's just say that isn't quite what happened. But hey, before you go, did you know AV made promotional Flash games for Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2? Thank you. No, 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 no. If you're hungry for more bananas, check out my bonus video where I check out the Super Monkey Ball websites along with the mini games almost lost to time. But until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.